The Gambia is a tiny country on the west coast of Africa where the tradition of dyeing and patterning cloth goes back several generations. Natural kola nut and indigo dyes continue to be used today in spite of the introduction of chemical dyes in the 1970s and the popularity of imported factory made cloth. Indigo blue dye is used throughout the world and is well known and well researched. In contrast, the rich orange-brown kola nut dye is found only in West Africa. Although the kola nut trade kola nuts are well documented, very little is recorded about kola nut dyeing. Kola nuts come from the tree kola natida. It is cultivated in the forests of several West African countries since kola nuts are an important trading commodity. For centuries, kola nuts have been used as a stimulant and are chewed to counteract tiredness, thirst and hunger. Today, they are still widely used in the Gambia for gifts and at ceremonies. The old nuts that are not suitable for chewing are sold off cheaply and used for dyeing cloth. The main centre of kola nut dyeing is Sukuta, a small town close to the capital, Banjul. Most of the traditional dyers using kola nuts come from the Serahuli ethnic group. This is a Serahuli compound in Sukuta, where kola nut dye is being prepared. The kola nuts, or guru, are being pounded in a wooden mortar and pestle. The crushed nuts are sieved, tipped into a large bowl and mixed with water to make a thick, brilliant, orange-coloured mixture. No other chemicals or substances are added. The dye bath is ready for immediate use. Mbemba Sankara, a well-known traditional dyer, prepares cloth for dyeing by folding it and tying it in various ways. He uses imported cotton cloth cut into three meter lengths. He can prepare more than 40 pieces in one dye session. Here he is preparing a traditional disc or circle design. After wetting the cloth, and marking the positions of the circles. He anchors the cloth with the heel of his foot and then starts pleating it. The pleated circles are bound tightly using cotton thread bought from the local market. The dye will not be able to penetrate these tied up areas of the cloth. When the circles are tied, he crumples the rest of the cloth against his leg after dyeing, it will have a mottled background. This pattern is called Asaman, meaning the sky or heavens. Cotton cloth can be tied in many different ways. Umu, a traditional cloth seller, sits in the market tying cloth in small clumps to make patterns of tiny circles. Mbemba begins dyeing the tied up cloth. He dips each piece repeatedly in and out of the kola nut dye bath. They are left to drain overnight. By the next day, they have turned a deep orange brown. To finish the dyeing process, the kola dyed cloths are over-dyed in indigo blue dye, or nganja. 
They are dipped several times in the indigo vat or banda. This is a large oil drum full of dark, smelly, greenish-blue dye. After dyeing, the cloths are rinsed and the threads cut, revealing the beautiful patterns. The indigo blue has mixed with the cola orange to make a whole range of subtle blues, greens and dark browns. Indigo dye has been the most popular and common source of colouring cloth throughout West Africa for centuries. Preparing the dye is a complicated process taking several days. Exact details of the recipe are kept a family secret. Traditionally, leaves of the indigo plant are pounded into balls which are soaked and mixed together with caustic soda and a liquid made from the roots of the local wanda bush. Mbemba tests to see if the dye is ready by checking its taste and its colour. Cloth dipped in indigo dye will appear green when it is first taken out. It will only start turning blue when it reacts with the oxygen in the air. The more times the cloth is dipped in and out of the dye, the darker the cloth will become. Mbemba also uses carved wooden batik stamps dipped in hot candle wax to make resist patterns on cloth. The stamps are made from teak wood by local wood carvers. Firstly, ordinary household candles are melted in a shallow metal bowl over a wood fire. The wooden stamp is dipped in the hot wax and then pressed firmly on the cloth. This cloth will have patterns made of an African comb design. The dye cannot penetrate the wax, so white patterns will be made wherever the cloth has been stamped. The next day, the cloth is stamped again with hot wax in places where orange patterns are wanted. Mbemba now dips the waxed cloth several times into indigo blue dye until the background has turned a deep black colour.
The waxed patterns remain orange and white since the blue dye cannot get through those waxed areas of the cloth. To remove the wax, the cloth is dipped into a pan of boiling water, lifted out with a stick and plunged immediately into cold water where it is rubbed hard to remove any remaining wax. Before the cloth is taken to the market, it is ironed in the traditional way by beating it with heavy wood mallets. These are made of mahogany and can weigh up to three pounds each.